I would like to say something right before we start the game. Go 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 go! I mean, it just seems so strange that you would firstly sing your own chant everywhere after winning the Euros. Then you would include Haaland, who has nothing to do with you, into that chant. Or that the Haaland is trebling because of that. And it's poetic that Haaland scores after dusting Kukurella, and that Kukurella gets injured and is just like. Is he's, he's left the field? That's it. So this is the lesson. Please don't fuck around and find out. Okay, don't what especially is, don't promote yourself so much. Yeah. It's such a narcissistic behavior. Yeah, I mean, yeah, like Chelsea <laughs> has this habit of you know finding these players who I don't know how they end up winning other competitions. Like you know, look at Enzo Fernandez and they just get themselves into like this weird state of scrutiny from media and everywhere, and they just don't have any way to look up to it. I think City never. Never nearly to get out of second gear today. They were missing, I think, mm-hmm. decent amount of players, and Chelsea did have some chances. But I think if they had scored, City would have stepped up. Uh, they have just increased the pace, the the passing range, and everything in the game, and they would have run Chelsea over. I think, to be honest, I personally felt like Guardiola took Ma- Maresca as like somebody who's like you know he likes, and so he shouldn't go hard at him. Otherwise, they would have just smashed them out of the park like five six nil. It literally felt to me like that. Why do you get? I, I don't. That there, there is no. no he didn't play players. He didn't play anybody. He played like random players. Like I mean, this is the first game of the season. Yeah, like, to be honest, there like, was not, not random. He never does that. There I mean, not random players. No, 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 no. I mean, he could still play. Dude, he, he I mean, if he does on. that, then why did he beat us five nil? Like, because like he, knows, he knows, he knows five nil. He knows the difference. No, no, because he hates Arsenal. You know that, right? He hates Arsenal. He's publicly admitted it. No, no. he hates Arsenal. No, he said that I what? hate the way the club is run, like backroom stuff. He hates it. I'll, I'll link it huh? to you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, he, link he it hates to me it. later. I uh, really doubt this is a situation. No, but yeah, no, Chelsea. No, no. But yeah, anyway, Chelsea overall, I feel like yeah. I mean, I think they're just gonna sign ten more players and it'll be fun. <laughs> Someone said it's one one five. Charles five of them. One on five players. players. Yeah. <laughs> and the moment Kovacic scored the second goal, I, you saw like Todd Bowley just get up and go to the room inside. Yeah. Probably looking to find another player. Oh, yeah, he Oshimana left. Or, right, like early. Yeah, he just left. Yeah. Kovacic left was the ready. first guy that fucked off from Chelsea when Todd Bowley came. Yeah. <laughs> you know what the funny thing is? The funny thing is Todd Bowley isn't even the main guy. Like this is just it's just. Twitter discourse at this point. There are way more other people. That there's that Baghdadi dude. There are a couple of other people who are in the play. Todd Bowley is just like in the front right now. We some somehow social media has put him in the front. He's not even there but because his face is funny as he's American, so it's it's more of more jokes, more of a scapegoat. But what what do you think? Like we saw glimpses of Pedro Neto. We saw like you know Romeo Lavia coming back. You saw Caicedo and the Lavia partnership. You saw Wesley Fofana coming back. So like Chelsea. Have a decent squad on paper. They have Cole Palmer also. You know, they just need a like a good striker in place of Nico Jackson. You, we saw how Nico Jackson was just all over the place today. But even if they manage to solve that, do you think Chelsea can actually you know make it big this year? Not even they just like top top four with Enzo Maresca going in into the season. Do you think that's a possibility for Chelsea fans to expect? You know, we'll find a lot about Maresca. In the next few games, like this, this game overall, like objectively looking at it, tactics were good. Good as in, like they were what he wanted to play, mm-hmm. but the positioning and pl- pl- playing players in positions that he should have didn't happen. Right, he had no width, but wanted Palmer and Kuku to hold width, which does just does not work. So now it really depends on how smart and how ballsy he can be in dropping one of those midfield positions i don't know i don't want to take names i mean they know this for the squad better like but they need to not play one of enzo lavia and caicedo and like maybe play in kunku or palmer from the middle or left eight because they are the best from there they just can't like palmer cannot do anything from the wings he was doing everything that he was doing last season from a left eight position like he was coming inside and there was an overlapping winger and then that's how he was excelling and that's that's what pochettino does he just extracts maximum out of your uh like attacking options and that's why i mean in my hot takes also i was like i don't think palmer will do great just because it's change of overall tactical systems so if he can drop one of those big money signings and make mm-hmm. the team functional then then sure they might get, uh, go on to do something but if he if he's just another ten hag who just cannot bench rashford then uh, you it'll be the same thing again and again he's coming Shots out and trying fired, to be right? ballsy with uh, 
naming players and like excluding them right like i think sterling he was pretty bit pretty ballsy and with chilwell who was the vice captain is like i don't see him playing for our club yeah. like so i guess if you have 35 players you can be like ambitious with your quotes and like dispensing dishing out drama in front of the media but uh, I was just looking at their wage bill, bro. It's, I mean, it's, it's not. They didn't give absurd salaries to the players that they signed recently, but they signed a lot of fucking players. They just signed an insane number of players. I don't know bro, what their they strategy is. They signed Tosin Adarabio yeah, for like a backup centre back position, and they gave him like one seventy k in wages, which is quite a Who? bit. Tosin Adarabio. But no, no transfer fee. No, they signed him on free. No transfer fee, but and like full the up. wage bill is still high, right? It's it's substantial for somebody who is probably your fourth choice centre back or fifth choice centre back. I mean, to be honest, you spread spread them together, right? So it doesn't come out to be that much, in my opinion. So traditionally, this is how Chelsea have operated, though. Like even under Abramovich, they always signed a bunch of players, and most of them went out on loan. And even mm. the team that won the CL was a very transitionary team, like. Tuchel was a top coach and a lot of he had he had all the instruments like basically like too many instruments and he found the right atmosphere to get the best out of them. Yeah, I don't think they're they're gonna have a manager like that again to be able to do that like that Mourinho who would do that again like would just get a bunch of people and you know, give him instruments and maybe he can like make a winning team out of it. Not many managers can do that and especially when you're like getting a manager who wants to play possession. Fucking hell, bro! Like, how will you build any chemistry between <laughs> any two players? Like, here's the thing, right? Like, even at training, how can you? There's too many patterns. How will you know which ones are the best ones? Like, too much information is also a problem here, right? And so, this uh, strategy, right, of uh, putting players on massive wages, I think it's going to be really fascinating watching their transfer strategy play out over the next few years. There's going to be a lot of these expensive signings on massive wages, massive contracts. Who are going to be like liabilities because they are eventually going to flow. There are players like I see Enzo Fernandez right now. Mm-hmm. I don't see him as a hundred million player at all. I think they replace yeah. replace Jorginho with a new young Jorginho. Literally, worse. Yeah, probably worse. <laughs> but I just don't. Person wise or football wise? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Every, everything. Debate, yeah. <laughs> Whole package. Honestly, also, I, I like I said, I think there's gonna be a war. That's gonna come <laughs> this year, next gym. year. It's gonna come. It's gonna be a war in the gym only, bro. Like literally, because basically, bro. Lavia will be hogging the bench press, and then <laughs> fucking Oguchuko <laughs> will come and be like, bro, what's happening? You <laughs> saw that video of Chelsea's gym, gym, right? <laughs> <laughs> that video of Chelsea's team was like yeah. crowded, and you know players have Five no place. Five Nigerians to... are sitting there. Hey, we all designed for Chelsea. <laughs> oh my god! Bro, but how like, it's how funny. how brainless it is! How how such a PR disaster that they basically sent out the armband with uh, Enzo. Like they could have literally chosen anybody else, but they chose Enzo. It's just like, the club is brainless is organization. Hilarious. Yeah. Club is hilarious. Club is too funny. It's just it's after. You know Abramovich. They were not funny. They were scary. Like yeah. they were just a like a mysterious organization who were just efficient, just winning, winning, buying. You just scared of that dark blue color. Like just stay away from me. Yeah. But now it's it's comedy. It's really fun. It's, it's very fun. adding it's spice to the Premier League, right? Yeah. <laughs> they, too too funny. There's some there's some uh, rumors that all of this is just because they uh, they know that they're gonna get a two year ban, transfer window ban. Sure, but still, bro. Like and, it's and I'm like no, no, and I'm like it's, how, it's like how will it still work? <laughs> Yeah. It's like COVID. They're hogging all toilet paper. It doesn't work like that, bro. Is that a statement on the quality of hogging. players? Or mm. and now, yeah, literally, and now they want Jao Felix and Twitter. And you know, dude, the best part about all of this is oh that Chelsea gosh. fans have become so brainless following this club that they right now they're addicted to that dopamine of signing. Players, they're just addicted. Players. Yeah. They're like they're <laughs> constantly following Fabrizio. They're like, give me more, give me more. I need more. They literally want that <laughs> adrenaline rush. That's all. They don't care about tactics, winning. They don't care about anything else. How do you support a club with 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 that kind of like an ethos, bro? Like yeah. it's weird. Like I can see United. I feel like okay, there are certain players you feel about. You know, the Arsenal. There are certain players. Stadium things. Chelsea. I don't know how they still support that club. I guess. I mean, they're gonna move to a new stadium right. apparently to fit all these new boys. <laughs> Make two dressing rooms, two tunnels. Yeah. 